All right, the other one that we could do, let's talk about B, the second thing here would be B to the N mod M. This simply represents B times B times B times B. We have N of them. And then I take mod N. Well, what I could use is a straightforward loop, right? I could just simply loop N times. So version 1, I could just simply loop on, say, K equal... 1, 2, n. And we could sit there and say, well, I could start off this entire thing first and have stuff like, all right, so If I want to do this, we would start off with, well, what if the power was zero? What should I return? Like, for example, if you loop from one to zero, what would happen? You would skip the loop, right? But what would you return? What's b to the zero power? One. And what's one mod anything? One. So let's start off with the answer is 1. That's b to the 0. From here on out, I'm going to start doing powers. And all I'll keep track here is to say, OK, this is easy enough. My answer is going to be equal to the answer times b mod, uh, that's supposed to be m, mod m, and that's it. What is this doing? I just keep multiplying by b and then just simply take the mod to make it small. Multiply by b, take the mod, make it small. <coughs> Multiply by b. Why can I do that? Because modulus goes through multiplication, right? So I could do this the hard way. I could say b times b times b times b times b and store that as what's called a partial product. Do all those multiplications and then take the modulus. Well, that's dumb because it's a big number. Modulus stays, it's going to blow up on us. On the other hand, if I just multiply by b once, take the mod, make it small. So if I go through once, this is b to the 0, I get 1. First time to the loop, it's 1 times b, which is b. Take the modulus, go to a small number. And then if it's 2, we do it again. That's times b, which is now b squared. Then b cubed and b fourth. OK, what's, what's the issue with this? This is nice. It's a very nice, very short algorithm. How long is the loop? How big is the power, right? If I take 123 to the 1 millionth power, how many loops does this have to do? It has to do a million loops. And it also kind of deals with an issue. Uh, for example, once I get to my second loop, I found b squared. But if I found b squared, does that also mean that you found b to the fourth? Because b to the fourth is b squared squared. But if you know b to the fourth, you can easily figure out b to the eighth, sorry, b to the, yeah, b to the eighth, because that's b to the fourth times b to the fourth. And so that's one version, but it's a long loop. Version number two uses this. b to the n mod m. If I could write n as... If I would write this in a base 2 expansion, this would be b to the a sub k, 2 to the k plus a k minus 1, 2 to the k minus 1 plus a1 times 2 plus a0. That's my n. It's written as a base 2 expansion mod m. What is any ai? What is it going to be? Base 2 expansions use how many symbols? Base 2 numbers use binary numbers. Use what symbols? 0 or 1. That's it. 
It's going to be a 0, 1, 2 to the k, 0, 1, 2 to the k minus 1, 0, 1, blah, 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 0, 1, 2 squared, 0, 1, 2. Look at this. Well, you know, how does this help me? Well, all right, wait a second. What's addition of exponents? multiplication of a base. So that means I could bust this thing apart. This is b a k 2 to the k b a k minus 1 2 to the k minus 1 times b times 2 sorry a to the 1 2 times b a sub 0. We're still taking mod. That's just a property of exponents. These are multiplications. What's multiplication of powers for exponents? That's a power to a power. So this now looks like this. This is b to the 2 to the k all to the a sub k. This is a b 2 to the k minus 1 a sub k minus 1 times b squared times a1 times b times a0 mod m. What is that? This looks like this now. I would write it a little bit differently. This is b to the fourth to the a2. This is b squared to the a1. This is b to the 1 a0 mod m. What do I notice about each of the bases? How do I get the next base? It's the square of the previous base. So let's say my base, you know, you're kind of asking, like, well, kind of, who cares? Well, what if your base is 2? Let's say your base is 3, and you're taking mod 4. What's one of the properties of modulus? Where's modulus going to go? Here, here, here. Here, all those will be mods. But that means I could easily rewrite every base with a smaller number. So, for example, what if I was taking a 3 to a power mod 4? If I wrote this as an expansion from above, this would look like this. This would be look like 3 to whatever a 0 is. 3 squared to whatever a1 is, 3 to the fourth with whatever a2 is, 3 to the eighth with whatever a3 is, and this continues on until we get over up to a to the k. And we're all taking mod 4. That's what that is happening. But we look at this and say, well, how does this help me? 3 squared, 3 to the fourth, 3 to the eighth, they're all big numbers. But... <laughs> What's 3 mod 4? It's 3. But if that's 3 mod 4, what would be 3 squared mod 4? What's 3 squared? 9. What's 9 mod 4? 1. Right? Two groups of 4 and one left over. What would that make 3 to the 4th mod 4. What is 3 to the 4th? It's 3 squared squared mod 4. But I already know 3 squared. It's 1. So what's the answer? 1. So if that's a 3, 3 squared is 1. What's 3 to the 4th? 1. What's 3 to the 8th? 1. What is everybody from this point on? 1. Now, when I look at it, and what are all these numbers? They're either what? Zero or one. If the power was zero, what's anything to the zero power? It's one. What's anything to the one power? Itself. So I could easily do this entire multiplication by figuring out what's the order, what do the bases do? And the bases are just simply square the previous base and take the mod. How do I get the next one? 
square it and take the mod. How do I get the next one? Square it and take the mod. So all I really need to know, that is easy to do. All I have to do is figure out what's the base two expansion. If it's a zero, my answer doesn't change. It's just it's times one. But if the answer is one, well, now it might change because it's actually multiplying something. So what does this formula look like? So what is our algorithm? I'm going to rewrite theirs a little bit. It's going to be b to the n mod m. Step one, n is equal to a k 2 to the k plus, sorry, 2 to the k. They use k minus 1. I'm just writing 2 to the k. Life's easier this way until we get down to a 2 2 squared plus a 1 2 plus a 0, which means that n is equal to a k, a 2, a 1, a 0 in base 2. So step one is you've got to figure out the base 2 expansion. And then what we're going to do is we start off now. Now we actually do it. So part one is that. Part two is that your answer starts off as one. And, all right, they use the word power. We need to keep track of these bases. Every base starts off as to the one, and then I square it to get to the next base, and I square it to get to the next base. They use the word power. Here's, a, here's an, an important part of variable choices. Choose variables whose names make sense. What do you think we should call the insides? What would you like to call the insides? If I'm keeping track of these insides, what do you want to call it? Inside? Base? All right, let's call it inside. And so the inside is simply, what's the very first one we have? B. We already used B, so it's simply B mod M. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the following. For A0, A1, A2, up to AK. It's a loop on the A's. However, this is pseudocode. I don't care how you do it, but... We start on the smallest, A0, and we go up to AK. Why? Because we work from right to left in multiplication of this thing. So for these numbers, we're going to go from left to right. If the thing that you're working with is 1, that means it changes the answer, right? Your answer is going to be equal to your old answer times the inside thing that you just did, and then we take mod m. So we're always taking mod m because it goes through it. Okay, what if it wasn't 1? What must it have been? It must have been 0. What will it do to your answer? Nothing, because it multiplied it by 1. So I don't need to change the answer. But on the other hand, what do I need to now find? I have a new inside because I move on up. That's equal to the old inside squared, and then do a mod m. And now we end our for loop. At the end of this, we return the answer. We're done. Now, if you want to, you can take part one and part two and put them together, right? Because uh, what am I doing? I'm doing for the a0, a1, a2. I just got to deal with each of the a's at a time. If I wanted to, I could do my base expansion, find A0, do this, find A1, do this, find A2, do this. So you can take your for loop and the part one and you simply replace each other. You don't have to do them separate. Okay, one of the questions is, uh, this is a whole lot more complicated. It took an awful lot of descriptions. Why, why two versions? Why would it even matter? Consider B to approximately 1 million. 
version, you know, for version one, the loop, I have no idea why I wrote a G, is approximately one million. I have to do a million things. But for version two, your loop, what's your loop on? Your loop is here. How many bits do you need to represent a million? For a computer, what's a meg? It's two to the what? Two to the tenth is a kilo. Two to the twentieth is a meg. So how many bits do you need for a million? About 20. That's it. And so because it's looping on that thing, it only is, it's about 20. How much faster is that? Would you love to just go from, it's going to take you a thousand million loops. I can do it in 20. That's a huge performance increase. What's a trillion loops? If a meg is 2 to the 20th, a billion is 2 to the 30th, a trillion is 2 to the 40th. So in 40 loops, I could do, I could replace a trillion ops. That's crazy fast, isn't it? What's after trillion? Quadrillion. And a quadrillion is how many billions? The million billions. What's the fastest CPU? On the order of what? Billion, right? Three billion or so. So you need, so a quadrillion requires about a million cores to complete something in a, in a loop. Well, I could do all of that in, okay, a billion. So a million was 20, a billion was 30, a trillion was 40, a quadrillion is 50. So you need a million processors or you need 50 loops, which do you want to do? It's a huge, 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 massive performance increase. That's why you want to take the time to do the math. I mean, do they give you the same answer? Absolutely mathematically. Does one make absolutely no sense in real world application? Yes. Does the other one actually work? Yes. We do this all the time in mathematics. It's called numerical methods is to sit here and say, you know what? The math is equal. One can't be done by computers. The other one can be. Since I'm using computers, I better use the other.